Chrome OS is well known for being able to run Play Store apps, but that is not possible with Chrome OS Flex. But in fact, you don't need to since there is a way better alternative, Linux apps. Hi, this is Carsten with OpenTech and while you are here, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. And in this video, we are going to enable the Linux mode on any Chrome OS device, including Chrome OS Flex, and we will install Linux software. Thanks, Siri. First of all, what I'm going to show you is not going to work with each and every device out there. In fact, it is limited to devices having more modern processors. In my testing, it was not working with my ThinkPad T440p, since the processor is too old and does not have all the mitigations for spectra and meltdown. That is enforced. So you need to make sure that you have a more modern processor, like fifth probably, in any case sixth or seventh generation of Intel Core processors. That is important. Then secondly, you need to make sure that you have Intel virtualization or AMD virtualization technology enabled in the BIOS of your device. And thirdly, you need to disable TPM chips. That is also not possible with every device. I at least managed to get enabling of virtualization and disabling of TPM chips on my ThinkPad to work, but nonetheless I failed enabling Linux apps since the processor is too old. That is why everything I show you now is filmed on an old Chromebook, which has support for the mitigations and which has support for Linux apps. So make sure you meet the prerequisites. Newer processor, I'd say minimum fifth, better sixth or seventh generation, enabling of Intel virtualization and AMD virtualization technology, disabling of any trust platform module, if possible. Once you have that out of the way, you can do as I do, since the steps will be literally identical from a Chrome OS Flex device compared with a Chrome OS device. Let's do that. We are here on the main screen of our Chrome OS device. First of all, let's switch into the settings and then into the advanced section. Here we have the developer section and there we can click on turn on for the Linux development environment. I do that and now I need to define a username and a disk size. I go with the standards here. The Linux virtualization is actually a virtualization. So in fact, there is a virtual machine created in the background. So this process might take a few minutes and while you are doing that, you can have a cup of coffee or tea. quite a while. Once the process was successfully finished, your Linux machine should start automatically. If that is not the case, open Chrome and head over to Chrome colon slash slash flex and then you should see all the available flags. If that is not the case, make sure you have 
TPM modules disabled in your BIOS or UEFI settings. So what we now do is we look for Crostini, since that is the code name of the product providing the actual virtualization. And we then enable Crostini use DLC. Also check if you find some useful settings with VMs, but I leave everything here on defaults as well. Could be that you need to play with that a bit, but typically if your processor is recent enough, it should just work. Okay, now I just close out there. Typically I would need to restart. And now we are going to make sure that we can actually install proper Linux apps. What you need to know is that the virtual machine is based on Debian. So all commands that work with Debian should work here as well. First thing we do is to execute an update and an upgrade command. It reads sudo apt update minus y and sudo apt upgrade minus y. So that might take a few seconds and then you have quite a recent system within the virtual machine. What we do now as first actual installation is we are going to install an alternative browser since I personally don't feel comfortable using Chrome. So what we are going to do is we actually install Brave Browser. Let's get through that. First thing we need to do is we need to install some additional components, apt minus transport minus HTTPS and curl. So we do that. Then we are going to install the Brave Browser Archive keyring as a public key, which allows to verify the origin of additional packages for Brave Browser. Next step is then to add the Brave package repositories. Then we do an apt update command to fetch the current information. And the last thing to do is to actually install Brave Browser. A command for that is sudo apt install brave minus browser. Perfect. Now we have successfully installed Brave and we are going to launch it. So what we do now is we open the launcher and search for Brave. We then see Brave web browser and open it. Again, depending on the speed and performance of your device, that might either go pretty fast or awfully slow in my case, it is more the latter one. That Chromebook is truly end of life cycle and I understand why it won't receive any additional updates. So we now hit OK here and there we have a working Brave browser. We can now use it to serve the web. So we hit the address bar and enter an address of our liking and after a few seconds we can work with any website. Major difference to any Play Store apps is that these apps, these Linux apps are true programs, not just mobile applications. And you see that since it actually behaves like a traditional desktop browser, which in fact it is. Okay, cool. We can now work with that and do whatever we want to do on the internet without making things visible to Google. We can also pin the browser to the taskbar now we can basically use 
Break browser going forward. As you can see, it is not that hard to install Linux applications on Chrome OS. What do you think? Is it worth the effort or do you prefer the built-in applications and web applications? Let me know in the comments below. And while you are there, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And don't forget, let's make the world a better place now more than ever. Thanks for dropping by. See you later. Bye.